Hello and welcome back to Matt Hayes Tottenham blog to our second stream in the space of two hours because we've got some fantastic news and an absolutely amazing update from George Bannister regarding Tottenham's pursuit of Alessandro Bastoni. Well, you all know what it is because it's the reason you're all here. And George Bannister has said today that he expects to hear official news soon of a Tottenham bid for Alessandro Bastoni. Now, as I said in my transfer roundup stream uh, about two hours ago, I heard earlier today that Tottenham had initiated talks with Inter Milan. I wasn't sure how, how true that news was, but it sounds like that could have been um, that could have been very accurate indeed. So according to George Bannister, and we'll read through the tweet in a second, um, expecting Tottenham to make an official bid soon for Alessandro Bastoni. And it does get better than that um, because he goes on to say, um, if this will load for me, uh, we expect to be first and close to Inter's asking price from the off. So this isn't going to be one where we go in and we say, you want 60 million, we'll give you 30. We're not going to go through that bartering way. George Bannister says Tottenham expect to be the first team to bid for Alessandro Bastoni and to be close to Inter Milan's asking price. So we had that report from Calcio Mercato earlier today where they said that Inter Milan's asking price of £51 million had turned Tottenham away from the deal. I sat here two hours ago and I said, utter crap. There's no way Tottenham would turn away from a deal for Bastoni for £51 million. We're going to go in with a bid and we're going to go in with a very, very good bid. Now, again, we've spoken so much about Inter Milan's financial situation and how they do have to sell players. They're looking to bring in Gleison Bremer from Torino. They need money to do that. They need to leave this transfer market with um, with, uh, with a profit of about £60 million. And, well, how are they going to get that back? It's, it's, it's from this man. Alessandro Bastoni. Um, look, just to get a, a few uh, a few other uh, bits from that tweet, uh, Bremer involved both as a target and a potential cog in Bastoni's sale. So that domino effect that has been spoken about, um, uh, Zeus on Twitter, I'm sure you all know, uh, got it absolutely spot on earlier today. Uh, so Bremer involved either as a player that Tottenham could bring in if we need it, but also as a cog in the sale of Alessandro Bastoni. So we saw it last summer when we saw in Christian Romero from Atalanta that they needed to get a replacement in order to sell Christian Romero and as soon as a deal was in place for Mary Demerel they let Christian Romero go and we were able to complete that deal this summer it's happening with with Alessandro Bastoni and Alfredo Padula reported earlier today that Gleison Bremer had made his decision and he was waiting for Inter Milan well that could have been enough for Milan to um to say okay we let Bastoni go. It's the player that, according to Gianluca Di Marzio, they could be willing to sacrifice between Skriniar and Bastoni. They're looking to sacrifice a defender in order to make that profit that they need in this window. And Alessandro Bastoni could be that man. I'm so incredibly excited. Um, George Bannister continues with more positive news. Two proposals set for Kostic and Perisic separately. Um, and there's uh, another bit to that tweet I'll get very quickly. Um, depending on Perisic's new deal, Spurs well placed for either. Um, Josh says I like George Bannister, but after the Kessia stuff, I would take his stuff with a big pinch of salt. Um, look, I, I, I just for anyone who doesn't know, I think George said um, was it back in January or back last summer that the Kessia was a done deal. Um, of course it wasn't. Look, everyone gets things wrong. George, for ninety nine percent of the time, is accurate with his stuff and is very very good. And the reason that I'm getting so excited about this is because, as I heard earlier today from a few sources, talks had already started. Um, again, I, I I wasn't really uh, positioned to to believe that, but combining that with what George has come out with in in the last ten or fifteen minutes, it looks very very likely that Tottenham are moving on this one. And we know Tottenham need to move quickly. Antonio Conte wants six deals done before we go on to uh, our, our preseason tour in South Korea in mid July. He wants these deals done, as Michael Bridge told us on the channel yesterday. It's not going to be six deals where we're getting three or four backup players, three or four depth players. It's going to be five or six first-team players who improve that first-team squad. And Bastoni is our number one target. We're prioritising left centre-back. Um, Bastoni is our number one target as a centre-back. So everything everything is... I keep forgetting to turn that off. <laughs> everything is piecing together. It really is. And like I said, when that, when that investment was announced a couple of days ago, this was a deal that I thought was going to get done. It's the priority. This is the number one deal for Spurs. Uh, Jack, they're asking when will Forster be announced. I think, I think everything is done with that. We're just, we're just waiting for, um, for the announcement. Uh, Kevin says just rescheduled my afternoon meetings for this update. Vid. Kevin, you're an absolute legend. Um, I, I love hearing that. But it, it all makes sense. It all makes sense with this. And I, look again. I've been, I've been crying out for Alessandro Bastoni since last summer. I, I really, really, really want to see this man in a Spurs jersey. And if you're if you're wondering why, th this is part of it. He is so similar to Christian Romero. Having one Christian Romero is utterly outrageous. Having two 
would be absolutely crazy. Matt says, I was trying to go to bed. I apologise. I apologise. Blame George Bannister. Blame Daniel Levy, Joe Lewis. Um, Derek Sung G says, if you get Bastoni, this would be a scary backline like we had with Toby and Jan. Um, yeah, look, I, I've said, I think if we get Bastoni, our defence will be better than um, than the Belgian wall we had. Justin says, I can hear the excitement. Look, like I said, I've been wanting this for so long. I'm so, so excited. Ben says, hook Bastoni and Romero into my veins. Um, and look, Bastoni... Again, those defensive numbers, like we said a couple of hours ago, aren't the best in the world. You know, he's, he's uh, relatively high for tackles one, relatively or quite low with interceptions and clearances. But those pressures and his stats in possession are utterly incredible. You know, pressures is in the top 9% in, in the top, Euro, uh, top five European leagues. Uh, successful pressures as well. You're looking at... Uh, in possession, he's really he's very involved with with a lot of touches. His pass completion rate is really good. He's passing into the final third. He's making progressive passes, shot creating actions, progressive carries. He likes to bring the team forward, and I, I can't stress enough. I really, really can't stress enough. As uh, Mero is is mentioning there in the chat, you can't stress enough how important Antonio Conte has been to Alessandro Bastoni, and how important Alessandro Bastoni has been to Antonio Conte. So when Antonio Conte went into Inter Milan, um, was it two, three years ago at this point? Was it 2019 he went in there? At that point, Alessandro Bastoni was a young centre-back. No one really thought much of it Inter Milan. He'd just been loaned out to Parma. He then came back into the team and Antonio Conte moulded him into his perfect left centre-back. Bastoni, the entire way that he plays, his style, his, his, his footballing philosophy on the pitch, his strengths, his weaknesses, his traits, his characteristics, all of it has been shaped by Antonio Conte. You know, like Ben Davis has done so well in that left centre back position for us. He's been arguably our most improved player this season. But Alessandro Bastoni has been made for that position. And he, he was incredible for Inter Milan there. Even last season, like I said, with Nuno in charge, Bastoni was the player that I wanted. He's so good carrying that ball forward. He loves to be in possession high up the pitch and compliments uh, Dyer and Romero so well. Tan is asking there Bastoni, Dyer, Romero. For me, 100%. 100%. I see people wanting Bremer as well, which is perfectly fair. I think Bastoni, Bremer, Romero is still a really good defence. But again, it looks like Bremer going to Inter Milan is the reason why Bastoni can come to Tottenham. So I'm more than happy, more than happy to see Gleis and Bremer move to move to Milan in order for us to, to get Bastoni. So there's such a good relationship there between Conte and Bastoni. And Bastoni himself has been quoted as saying, uh, you know, how much he owes to Antonio Conte and how, how important he was to... Um, to his development and look, I don't think we really needed to hear from him we can see it on the football pitch we can see um, we can see what happens and we're going to get some um, some quotes here from Alessandro Bastoni so he was quoted as saying everyone had spoken highly of Conte and working with him has only confirmed how great he is as far as I'm concerned Conte is the messy of coaches so Bastoni <laughs> massive massive praise you know highlighting Conte is one of the best managers if not the best manager in the world um, an article here from Football Italia um, Inter and Italy defender Alessandro Bastoni praises his former coaches Giampiero Gasparini and Antonio Conte but says he owes 90% of what he is today to the current Tottenham coach. Bastoni made a Serie A debut with Atalanta in 2016-17 before joining Parma on loan and then Inter on a permanent deal. Uh, the father of one of my classmates took me to the first trial with Atalanta, the inter uh, Italy international told his own. Um, I'll try to find these comments on... So how about Antonio Conte? Bastoni won his first Serie A title under the Italian tactician last term, becoming one of Italy's most promising defenders. He was the one who consecrated me. I owe him 90% of what I am today, the defender admitted. He gave me so much technically, but also in terms of mentality. Not every coach plays a 20-year-old guy in a team like Inter. I owe him so much. And that that mentality is really key for, for uh, Bastoni to mention there, because... I've said quite a bit in the last couple of weeks that the difference in recruitment between Mauricio Pochettino and then Antonio Conte and Fabio Paratici, and I completely understand the worries and concerns that are coming from Tottenham fans with this £150 million injection, where they say that the track record isn't great. And looking at that magnificent seven when we sold Gareth Bale in 2013, they're saying, well, why, why should we trust that this team, that this club is going to go out and get players that are good enough to improve this team with the £150 million budget? And the difference is... From an outsider looking in, what I can see is that Anto or Mauricio Pochettino bought players based on talent and bought players based on ability and didn't bring into consideration their, their impact of the team off the pitch, their um, their mentality, their adaptability and all that. Whereas Conte and Paratici 100% deep dive into that sort of stuff. And we 
spoke earlier about that report from Sky Sports that Tottenham had looked at a high-profile Premier League player and decided not to pursue him because of his disruptiveness off the pitch. I understand that to be Paul Pogba. I think Pochettino in that position signs Paul Pogba. Conte doesn't because there's so much more to it than just how good they are. And that mentality that has been instilled in Bastoni was done so by Antonio Conte. Um, Look, he goes on to say how happy he is to have signed a new contract at Inter, um, which was, I can't see a date on this, but obviously it doesn't matter too much now. Um, And we we saw the post, we looked at it earlier, Alessandro Bastoni put on Instagram. um, This, uh, the one on the left anyway, is the, a post he put up in his story uh, where he's he's applauding the fans at the at the San Siro. He um, has the blue and the, the black heart. And it, look, this can be taken in two very, very different ways. Um, the, the first one is that he's thanking the fans for a fantastic season. The second is that he's saying goodbye. Um, and to be honest, we, we we really don't know. To me, this feels a lot like the the picture of Antonio Conte smiling, look at, looking out at the the Mediterranean last summer when, when Tottenham fans thought he was in London signing his contract and all of a sudden he was he was on holidays um, and, and enjoying himself. So there is a feeling of that about it. But if he had just played the last his last game for a team that he made his name at, that he has, has played the majority of his professional, albeit short professional career at so far, that could be a farewell. I'm Josh here with a super chat with the 450. Thanks a million, Josh. I appreciate that. Says, if we get Bastoni and Kostic in early... This is already the best summer in years. The only thing that worries me is both players are defensively suspect. Look, absolutely. Um, again, we, we did speak about that earlier with Kostic and his his really, really poor defensive stats. Uh, Bastoni, not as bad, but also has a bit of concern there. Um, what I will say is that Conte is handpicking these players, and he will know he will know their weaknesses. He will he will know how to how to balance you know what needs to happen and. Like I said, with, with the way we play, that almost seesaw effect at the back, when, when when Ben Davis goes forward, Romero sticks. When Romero goes forward, Davis sticks. It's going to be the same with Bastoni. And with, with the way we play our wingbacks, they don't really need to be that good defensively. Um, so Kostic and whoever's on the right-hand side won't need uh, a massive defensive aspect to their game. But with Bastoni, he'll always have someone with him. He'll always have Eric Dyer with him because Dyer never goes forward. So hopefully there's a way to balance that within the system that we're playing. But I completely agree there is concern there with, with how suspect they are defensively. Um, just to read that uh, that Instagram post from Alessandro Bastoni, which was put up separately to this story, uh, or to, to that Instagram story, he said, It's been a long and eventful season. Many were the hard nights full of surprises, but just as many were the satisfactions, the Super Cup, Coppa Italia, and that night we swept Anfield, even if that wasn't enough uh, for us to qualify. A united team that has faced every game and every training with a seriousness and determination that has led us to finish this season, not as we wanted, but still in a positive way, showing character and will to fight. Thanks to the club, teammates and fans for helping to make these months even more special and unforgettable. You can't change the past, but what you can do is always do your best to make sure that the future is more and more colourful than black and blue. Love. Uh, Inter New Year's Eve and you've, uh, Marco Matarazzi an Inter Milan legend and Steven Zhang uh, the owner of Inter Milan replying there with the, the black and blue hearts as well now again like the like the picture there on, on the left hand side there are two ways to take that um, the the first one is that he's saying when he says you can't change the past what he can do is he's saying you know like one can't change the past you know referring in a more general sense but he could also be saying to the fans you can't change the past but what you can do is make sure that the future is full of of black and blue, full of Inter Milan. Maybe that's his way of saying I'm not going to be part of that future. You know, it's it's impossible to to know for sure what these uh, what both of those mean. So we're going to sit here. <laughs> You're damn right. We're going to speculate, um, and we're we're going to hope that it is um, it is Bastoni saying goodbye to Inter Milan. But only only time will tell. Uh, even if a move does happen, who are we to to say if um, if this has been. If, if this actually was a goodbye, did he know at this point that he was going to leave? Um, I'm scrolling through Twitter to see if there's anything more um, on this, but it seems still just to be uh, George Bannister. So to reiterate, for anyone who who may have missed the news, um, George Bannister on Twitter through the Spurs ITK hub said, um, let me try to find this again, um, expect news on an official Bastoni offer very soon. I just want to mention again that I heard earlier today that Tottenham were in talks with Inter Milan and Alessandro Bastoni. I wasn't too sure how true that was, so I didn't I didn't want to put it out there without first vetting the information, which I couldn't do effectively. It looks as though that may have been true. We expect to be first and um, close to Inter's asking price from the off. 
So we're not messing about. We want to get this deal done early, like Antonio Conte has specifically requested from Tottenham. And of course, we do also have to mention that Conte and Paratici, we know for a fact, were in Italy this week. They could still be in Italy for all we know. So while Paratici went over to have a word or two with Antonio Conte about the, the targets they were going to fight for this summer, maybe he made a trip to Milan and maybe he went and he spoke to, to Steven Zhang or is it is it Beppe Morata, who's the director of football at Inter Milan now, or, or the CEO. Um, we know how good Paratici is at getting deals done behind the scenes. This is one where where he very well could have done that. Now look, for all we know, maybe there has not been any contact. Maybe my, my, my sources were wrong on that one. Who knows? Only time will tell on that one but it does look like a bid will be coming in soon. Um, get your thoughts, get your questions in the live chat. And Welsh Gals is big up, Matty. Excellent content as always. I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate all the support as well. Um, Young Mal says, is uh, Fraser Foster uh, for Tottenham? So that, that deal is done, but it hasn't been officially announced. So he, he's he's had his medical. He's, you know, all the personal terms are agreed. It's on a free, so there's no negotiation with Southampton. Uh, that's one that we're just expecting to, to, to kind of take through. We, we'll hear about it. Uh, sooner rather than later and um, we also had some updates from Sammy Mockbell of the Daily Mail so yes Daily Mail you can laugh with Sammy Mockbell quite a reliable Spurs journalist so I was going to bring you a few of those because they came after we ended our live stream earlier today he reiterated that Tottenham are in in talks with uh, or are interested rather in Richarlison from Everton we know that Mike McGrath said it uh, last week or the week before uh, Matt says where did George Bannister say this can't find a tweet so it came through the the Spurs ITK hub. I've actually spoken to George and confirmed that, that it was his news. So it's 100% coming from George Bannister. Um, but I, I had the same fear. I was looking through his Twitter and it wasn't there. And I, I thought, oh, we've we've been conned, but we haven't. We haven't. I've, I've vetted it with George. It's 100% his. Um, so yeah, Mockbell saying that we're, we're interested in Richarlison. Just another addition to that list of strikers that we're, um, that we're interested in. Um, he also says that Tottenham have placed a £25 million valuation on midfielder Harry Winks. Newcastle and Southampton have registered their interest in the man of the hour. George Bannister also said that Crystal Palace are interested in him. And that has been the case since January. And a very interesting one from Sammy Mockbell. Uh, Brian Hill is expected to be sold this summer. That that was a massive surprise for me. We were talking earlier about the, the report from Marca where they said that Valencia are interested in bringing Hill back on loan for the season. But Tottenham wants to loan him out to a team in either the Conference League or the Europa League. Um... Well, it looks like that that may not be the case. We're to believe Sammy Mockbell, Brian Hill is expected to be sold, which is a massive surprise to me because um, you know we just signed him last year for twenty five million pounds in Lamella. He was only really in our squad for four or five months, and then he was loaned out to to Valencia, where he had a really really good spell. For me, I think that's very early to to give up on a, give up on a player who you know was 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 being uh, scouted by Barcelona and by Real Madrid and touted as one of the the best up and coming wingers in. In European football, and I know he doesn't quite fit into Conte's style, but Conte's not going to be here forever. You know, I'd rather loan out Hill for another season and see see how he goes and keep the opportunity to maybe if something goes wrong with Conte, if he leaves at the end of next season, to then still have the player at our disposal. But if if Conte needs funds and he doesn't want him, I suppose as much as it hurts me to say it, I'd love to see Hill. Um, I'd love to see Hill stay, but if Conte wants him gone and needs the money. I'm afraid it's it's probably the best option. Now, somebody also suggested on Twitter that, um, you know, Hill has, has spoken about how difficult he's found it to adapt to not just the football, but to life in England. So maybe he's homesick. Maybe he wants to leave. Maybe he needs to leave. Um, but what, whatever the reason, it, it is quite surprising to me if that is true from Sammy Mockbell. Again, a very good source, despite the fact that he writes for the um, for the Daily Mail. Um but look, the, the news of the hour, the, the main thing to take from this to the 576 of you that are watching is that Tottenham are expected to make an official bid for Alessandro Bastoni soon. Um, Antonio Conte is happy. Daniel Levy is so confident that he's happy that he didn't go to, to Italy for that meeting. Uh, Harry Kane is excited at, by the future as far as and he's open to talks for a new contract. Enoch have invested £150 million and are ready to sign five or six first team players to improve the team. And, and best of all, Tottenham are back in the Champions League. It is a, it's a far cry from the absolute mess, an absolute mess that Tottenham Hotspur Football Club was last summer. And you know what? I enjoyed covering last summer. I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed the streaming. I enjoyed the content. Um, so you can only you can only begin to imagine how much I'm going to enjoy uh, covering this transfer window for Spurs. And whenever news comes out like this, this is the place you want to be. We'll bring you everything you need to know. We'll bring you the the stats, the 
you know, the context, the reports, absolutely everything. If you do want more of that, please do make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. As Matt says there, less than 10% of viewers have liked the stream. So please do go down and hit that like button. It's a massive help to um, to everyone who streams, uh, everyone who uploads videos to hit that like button. Um, so please do and subscribe while you're down there to um, get involved in the live chat to to get more of these streams as well. Um, uh, Kevin says we're going to be hearing a lot of haze we go this summer. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed we are. Um, Richard says top stadium, top manager, Champions League football. Kane saying sunny golden boot as well. Money made available. It's not it's Tottenham but not as we know it Bastoni imminent am I dreaming Richard you're not dreaming Toby thanks for subscribing did you serve thanks for subscribing none of us are dreaming um, look long may it last long may it last um, hopefully Tottenham can get this over the line soon along with the move for Philip Kostic or Ivan Perisic as George said we will be um, we will be looking to, to make deals for both of those as well thanks everyone for tuning in Thanks to the 600 of you that are still here watching me just giggle all excitedly in my bedroom at half nine. Um, I really do appreciate it. Ian, thank you for subscribing. Um, Jimmy, thanks for the kind words. Um, Spurs are going places. Spurs are absolutely massive. But for me, for now, as always, thank you so much for watching.